Okay. This is Connie Williams, and Connie Williams uh, is a great friend of ours, and she's married, and she's married to, to Myron, and we'll introduce you to Myron in a minute, but uh, I want uh, Connie just to tell us a quick little story about what she's learned in the whole speech therapy process, what, what she experienced with traditional therapy, and what she's experiencing now. Okay, um, well, we started out with traditional therapy in the hospital, um, where they would come and have Myron sing happy birthday, and they would lay the cards out on the table and say, show me the spoon, show me the hammer, and show me the belt. And we did that from May, May, June, July, and then in August, we changed our uh, neurologist. They t told us they were going to have all kinds of programs and things, activities for Myron to um, participate in. But after the week of testing, they came back and says, "Well, he's not really ready to do group therapy. That you know, we'll just do one on one with him at first until we get him to that point." So we started going one on one, and he we were going three times a week, and it was more of show me the spoon, show me the belt, show me the plate. And he was getting frustrated at that point because we were t expecting him to be involved in a lot more things. Um, and it was really just more of the same. And after two whole weeks of going, three times a week, um, they told him that they didn't feel that he was progressing the way that he needed to. And kind of pushed us or, or were pushing us towards group therapies with other facilities um, in Houston. And so I said, okay. So I called and they said, well, if he's not doing well one-on-one, -on -one, group therapy is not going to be the way for him to go. It's going to be harder for him to communicate with a, a group of people than if he's doing it one-on-one. -on -one. I'm really surprised that they would tell you to do that. So I got that from one place, and I called another place. Well, it turned out that that was really students learning to become speech uh, therapists, kind of practicing, I guess, on uh, patients with aphasia. So the last time he went for a session, um, the therapist told him, well, this will be your last time. And so when when I talked to him, we were, we were trying to communicate on the phone, um, and I could tell he was very upset. And so when I, I, I had to go pick him up, and when I picked him up, um, that was, he was really upset that, you know, he just pushed, he was pushed out, and they didn't have anything for him anymore. So I said, well, maybe I misunderstood how they were doing this. So I called the social worker, and she explained to me that he needed to be progressing to a certain level in order to be able to continue to participate in their program. And um, she had also given me Mark's name, and I had looked him up on his website, um, Make Raps Talk, and he has an audio, and you kind of get a feel for his personality, and I was like, I, I like him, but I think this might be too expensive for us, and so I kind of had put that to the back when trying to use the other places, um, but then after this happened, and we were really feeling very frustrated. I mean, my husband was crying. I was crying. The therapist just told me he's not progressing. I'm like, well, I don't understand that. You know, I, I teach special ed. I have kids who have things that they're not able to do, as well as other kids. And I couldn't even imagine saying to their parent, oh, well, we can't work with him, which is what I felt they were doing to us. So I'll, I went back online. I pulled up Mark's website, and I... There was a place where you could send Mark a message, and I sent it to him, and, and I you know, gave him my, our story. And I said, well, you know, maybe we'll find a way to, to be able to pay for this. And so um, Mark called me right back within 30 minutes of me sending that uh, email. And when I explained that you know, to him what was happening, um, he told me that you know, maybe he could meet with us, and we could, you know, and if, in a, if I didn't think that it was a good thing, then that would be the end of it. So... He came the next morning. It was everything was happening so fast. It was like it was that's the way it was supposed to happen. And Mark's personality and just how he makes you feel hopeful and encouraged and 
that there was nobody too low to work with and that everybody was going to do better. You know, we don't know where you're going to get, but it's going to be better. And so we were so encouraged after that one hour session that we said we have got to find a way. And it just worked out where um, with Mark getting connected with another hospital that we were able to do it through insurance. And so um, we've been doing that since October. And we have seen great strides. I mean, we are so much, it's so much easier to communicate now that, you know, Myron is saying sentences and he's understanding. And I think that was a bigger part of it than we realized that his understanding had been um, impaired by the stroke. And so now, you know, whether we have to act things out or it's just inflection or whatever, it's, it's the, it's so positive. It's so it, it just makes you want to keep coming back. We look forward to, to um, the therapy sessions because they're fun. We laugh a lot. And I think by being that comfortable that it kind of helps Myron to even, you know, go further because he doesn't feel threatened. He doesn't feel like someone is looking at him and saying what you're not doing. It's all, it's all so positive and all so wonderful. It's been life changing and we're so happy and we say that that bad experience was what led us to Mark, so therefore it was a good experience after all. Okay, so here's, here's the big question. Were you trained at all during how many months of traditional speech therapy? Oh, no, I just sat there. Like In fact, the last few times he went, I didn't go with him because there was no need for me to go with him. There was nothing for me to do other than I observed what they did. I mean, you know, we'd have sheets that he could take home and I might have to go through that with him, but it was... Yeah, it was. It felt tedious. It didn't feel fun. This is fun, and this is natural. It's like now, whenever he says something, or he's trying to say something, or he doesn't want to say something, and he just wants me to figure it out from his um, gestures, I say, okay, are you trying to say so-and-so? And that's, that's what Mark uh, has taught me to do. Um, that I can take anything that we're talking about, I can take it and give him the words, and then he repeats the words, and he has so many more words now. He's got this huge vocabulary, and it's it's it helps because I'm learning what to do, so when we're not in a session, I can then do the same thing that Mark does, although I don't think I have your personality, and I really think that that's part of it, too. <laughs> what it does, it makes it fun instead of it being a chore that you have to sit down and go through these pages and look at pictures and all this kind of stuff. It's, it's more relevant. It's, it's meaningful. And, and I'm able to help, and I know I probably could do even more than I'm doing, but I tend to go by his gestures to figure out what he's trying to say. So, But it is. It's something I'm learning to do that I can continue to do on and on and on, and I think the more we do it, the, the more. Okay. What do we talk about? Things, our lives, we talk about what we're going to go and eat, where we're going to go this weekend, what we did last weekend. Um, it's things that are rel relative, or relevant to us because we're, it's our lives. And it's basic, everyday stuff. So it's just... You know, Can you give us a ex real quick example? Okay. Um, like we say, you know, well, um, what did you eat today? And, you know, so did you eat breakfast? And, and then say, can you tell me? I ate breakfast, and then what did you eat for breakfast? And if he hesitates, did you eat eggs? Did you eat cereal? And he'll say, yes, I ate cereal. It's like you give him the words, and then he gives them back to you, and we start out small, and it could be two words, and we've, we've progressed now to where we have normal sentences with, you know, four and five words. It's, um, it's been really good. Okay. Did you say? Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> and here he is. <laughs> yes. And what did you say your name is? Myron Williams. <laughs> <laughs> what else should we ask him? Um, did you eat breakfast today? Yes, it was, it was good. <laughs> <laughs> and what did you eat for breakfast? Um, Can you tell me? Um, I ate Breakfast. Okay. I ate cereal. cereal. Yep. For breakfast. Mm -hmm. yeah, very good. Okay. Very good. Where are you going tonight? Um, You're going to dinner at Italiano's. Very good. good. Very good. Okay. And what are you going to have? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> One of your favorites, right? Um, 
Veal Parmesan. Yeah. <laughs> it's good. Yeah. <laughs> and then after you go out for dinner, what are you going to do? We will, we will go into, um, are we going to where? Are we going back home? Home. Good. Okay. Yeah. Tell me. We're, we're going home. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Very good. Okay. And what's today? Friday. Yeah. Friday. You like Fridays? Yeah, it's good. Yeah? It's good, man. So you like Fridays? Yeah, good. Tell, tell me that. I, I like Fridays. Yeah, okay. Well, <laughs> say goodbye to everybody. <laughs> Friday. <laughs> <A> Friday. <laughs>